Hello, I'm Simon Monk and I'd like to talk to you about the fourth edition of Practical Electronics for Inventors. Um, I've just finished uh, doing my amendments to this book and this is the third edition. You can see the third edition was already a pretty weighty tome. Um, I can't claim too much credit for that really because um, Paul Shirts had already got it into quite a, a pretty thorough book by the time I, I joined in on it. So in the third edition, I added some new chapters on sensors, um, microcontrollers and Arduino, just to give the whole book a bit of an update. In the fourth edition, which will be out very soon, I've been looking at um, field programmable gate arrays, FPGAs and programmable logic as a, a major area to add to the book. So there's a new chapter in there on that. And Paul has also been through um, putting a whole load of errata fixes into the earlier chapters in the book. So we're, we're quite happy with the new edition. I think it'll be really good. The um, FPGAs, if you haven't met them, this is, a, this is a board with an FPGA at the centre of it. This board is called the Elbert 2. It only costs about $30 and it has a Spartan 3A Xilinx FPGA chip in the centre of it and some other components that you can just use for prototyping so seven segment LED displays some dip switches and some push buttons and some LEDs. Um, it's a great little board very good value for money and I use it as an example uh, for how to actually program an FPGA. So I should perhaps take a step back and explain what FPGAs are. These are programmable logic devices so they're general purpose hardware this is a chip that you can uh, rather you can define by writing either drawing a schematic or by writing some code which looks like programming code but it sort of isn't it's a hardware description language in a language called Verilog and what this does is it configures the chip the chip is made up of general purpose gates in it and this kind of routes all the gates and sets them up and connects everything together and you, all of that process is transparent and at the end of that you get effectively your own custom chip that does exactly what you specified it to do. Um, so I cover um, setting up the Xilinx of the company who make this particular FPGA um, and they're, they're probably the market leader in this. They have a very complicated development environment called ISE that takes a bit of setting up. So I cover setting that up and then I look at how you can define hardware using uh, by drawing schematics and then having it effectively written onto the uh, onto the FPGA so that it will behave as if you were, had a whole load of discrete logic chips connected together. But then that, that obviously soon gets too complicated, it soon gets too complex and generally when people are programming FPGAs they use a language either VHDL or Verilog um, and I've chosen Verilog, although once you've learned one of these languages you won't find it a big step to learn another. So this program, a few different example programs I use that sort of mimic uh, uh, things that you might make with discrete logic chips, so there's a sort of decade counter, a seven segment decoder, and then bringing it all together and having a sort of multiplexed seven segment uh, display uh, using this example board uh, so that you can actually try it out if you want to, because I think it's all very well reading about things, but you really need to actually get your hands on them and make them, I think, to, to properly understand how they work. FPGAs are, are pretty amazing because you can even um, design a microcontroller, burn it onto the FPGA, and then include the program to run on the microcontroller along with some other hardware. It's all part of the same thing. Okay, so that's the major updates for the fourth edition of Practical Electronics for Inventors. And, um, Thank you for listening.